Hello and welcome guys to the Young Success Story podcast. I'm Michael. And I'm Jaden. Our goal is to document the journey of some of the most successful young minds around the globe. We hope to highlight their path, showing their failures, successes, and shine a light on the road less traveled. There's no such thing as an overnight success. Everyone has their own journey, and we are lucky enough to share some of their stories with you. Let's talk men's health and performance. If you need help with your health and wellness, in particular men's hormones health, reach out to the team at Renew Clinic. Men's hormones is a complicated world and can be risky if you do it alone. They have in-house doctors and pharmacists that look after you from start to finish and give you guidance and ongoing care along the way. They help me reach my health and wellness goals without burning my wallet. They're super easy to deal with. All it takes is one simple email and their team will guide you through. Email info at renewclinical.net to get your journey started today. That's I-N-F-O at R-E-N-E-W-C-L-I-N-I-C-A-L dot net. Today we are joined by young entrepreneur, the one and only Mitch Third. We talk about his journey to building a million dollar company, what it took and what the future looks like for him. Enjoy. Let's get into it. Thanks for having me boys. Grateful to be here. Thanks for coming Give on. us um, a bit of background on yourself. So the guests that don't know you, I guess maybe start off family, school, and maybe talk about how you transitioned from school to where you are today. Yeah, awesome. Born on the Gold Coast, raised here. Local. Love it here, man. The lifestyle is just um, absolutely amazing. So yeah, born here on the Gold Coast, went to TSS, all boys school, enough to get a scholarship there with Rugby Union. That was initially uh, the plan with all this, was to become a professional rugby player. Um, and when Sick. I retired, become a sports psychologist. So yeah, went to school at TSS. Rugby was such a, a big thing in my life. Sport in general, just like competition was raised in a family that loves sport. So competition uh, is in my DNA, sport is in my DNA. And then, yeah, so I graduated school, TSS. I went to university, I actually did a double degree of sports, uh, sorry, exercise science and psychology, wanted to become a sports psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so footy was, was the dream, was the goal. I even moved down to Canberra, played down there, semi-professional. And, uh, I don't know, man, I suppose like for me, I'm very big into alignment and things always happening for you and not and not to you. So, uh, yeah, I got delivered a, a contract on the table and I, I pretty much said no just to go on a holiday. Um, it just, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I sort of laugh at it now. Uh, my parents weren't happy at the time. Um, but yeah, I how, just... How old were you when you got off of that? It was, I was 20 years old. 20 turning 21 I think yeah True. so um a young buck dream got delivered on the table and uh I said no to go to go on a holiday uh to Bali and I suppose this is where I'm going with this story of how I got into my business was I said no to this holiday I went to Bali I remember very vividly being on uh off the coast of Bali on this polluted beach um, there was just so much rubbish and more specifically single use plastic, uh, bottles. Mm. So I wanted to create a reusable water bottle that would prevent people from buying single use plastic bottles. And at the time we're still playing footy, just sort of like casually. Um, and as you do, you have your protein shakes and mm. I was just so sick of the generic old smelly shaker. So I'm like, how can I innovate and make a product that will not only create a reusable water bottle, but can solve that issue of supplementation, getting stuck in the corners. And yeah. that's sort of how I come up with the fix. Was that your first sort of business venture? Yeah, correct. So I've actually, I've never had a nine to five. Um, oh, true. Never had a nine to five. And I think subconsciously growing up, my father was an entrepreneur. He had his own business. All my uncles had their own business. So the, the last thing third, <laughs> it's uh, being an entrepreneur is in my blood and um, I don't know any any different. I never. Do you, do you think growing up around those sort of people, def, like I guess help, help carve the path where you are today kind of thing? Yeah, 100%. I, I see the lifestyle that my uncle has, the freedom that my, that my dad gave me, um, you know, just very grateful for the the yeah the life that my dad has given me and mm. i suppose i don't think you can have a life like that i had having a nine to five so yeah, did, you, did you get to witness um i guess any of your, your uncle or your dad go through any sort of big failures or struggles and like i guess pick up on some of their sacrifices they had to make yeah definitely i think one of my uncles he actually started a restaurant in Broadbeach. 
um, put all his money into it, basically all his life saving, everything that he's worked for into this restaurant. Um, it failed, like big time, went broke, lost all his money, all his investment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, seeing that, I, I know that it isn't just, you know, dreams and fairy tales, like the, you can lose a lot of money in this industry, but yeah, big risk, big reward. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, he somehow got out of that lump and now has a restaurant uh, in Noosa up in the Sunshine Coast that does really well. So I, I've seen that firsthand that when you do uh, risk a lot of things, it's not all reward. Like there are definitely... I definitely think yeah. these days as well is like people don't get to see the background or what the hard work, the sacrifices, the struggles, the failures. That's and that's, right. that's a big point of this podcast is we want to try it. And, and see the, the background and share that it's not all fucking sunshine sun and, and roses, you know what I mean? There's everyone's got their own their own journey their own story and it's just not you don't just wake up and you're successful kind of thing there's, mm. there's a lot more more to it and we, we want to try and um i guess get the the background of that and be able to share that with some of the guests yeah, yeah for sure and i think um throughout my journey is you change as a person as well so mm. your passion and your goals are always changing based on you as a person so you know i always had this vision of being a rugby player and that's it. I never had any other vision of being anything else. So if mm. someone told me, you know, when I was in school 10 years ago that I would own several businesses, um, you know, not be a rugby player, mm. be sort of traveling the world and, and be out, being able to have the, the time freedom and location freedom that I have, I, I wouldn't believe them. Yeah. So I suppose throughout everyone's journey sort of change as a person and just sort of... Uh, yeah, it just sort of goes that way, I yeah. suppose. And so, so when you so you said no to the contract, you went overseas. You saw that all the pollution started third fix. That's a lot of the times you hear of people sort of they they I think it's like the first 10, 10 businesses or whatever you start yeah. tech, usually fail. You went straight from that into building third fix into a massive sort of business in Australia. Did you you obviously hit some struggles? What was that like? And sort of. Like what made you keep pushing and how did that sort of some process of go? First big failures or first struggles in, in that Yeah, that you pushed through and sort of came yeah. through the other side. Um, so for me, it was, a, it was a side hustle when first mm. starting. So I didn't go all in. So there was about a year there where um, I was still at university full time, still sort of like, when I said no to the contract, I went on the holiday and I came back and I said like, you know, just because it didn't turn out good in, in Canberra, I could maybe make it somewhere else kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know why, but the, the holiday was just so important to me. <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know why. So I came back and um, so I was at full-time uni and still playing footy. And so Third Fix was just a, a side hustle. Mm. So I didn't like invest heaps of money or I didn't go all in. And mm. so there was a year there where I graduated from uni, was still playing footy and had Third Fix on the side. Mm. Um, but where third fix really took off was where I put all my eggs into the one basket. Yeah, yeah. When did you realize like this is a time where I've got to really go for this kind of thing? It, it actually, I had to really look at my life. It started at the end of 2019. I, I wasn't happy with who I was as a person, um, what I was doing with my life. So before um, I made big moves with my business, I made big moves personally yeah. and changing um, you know, my habits, my routine. And that's w what I'm known for now is this guy that embodies like self-discipline. So mm. that's where it started was me changing my personal life. And that's where I got into meditation, breath work, waking up early, um, going to the gym, biohacking, all these things. So I slowly put in this morning routine that would help my mind, body and soul to start the day. Mm. And when I put these things first, the business kind of just followed with that. Mm. Um, so I went all in on, on personal development and then I kind of said, fuck it, let's let's make Third Fix my, my sole focus, uh, put a lot of money into into stock um, and made the made the most of the whole COVID situation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, we, we were lucky enough this morning to, to get involved with um, your morning routine. Mm. How much do you think that impacts where you are today i think you should work harder on yourself than you do your job first and foremost your health is your number one priority so i have all these goals and aspirations to to, to do big things but none of that exists if i'm unhealthy mm. or my mental health is poor or you know a lot of these things where 
I, I hang around guys who are, are richer than me, but they're not as spiritually aligned as I am, or they're not physically as healthy as I am. Or mm-hmm. I have guys who are all in on their health, but they've got no money to their name. So for me, it's having a, a well-round um, sort of, yeah, just making sure that I have everything, whether it's mind, body, soul, finances. Mm. Um, but I think it's so important. Like I think if you put in the effort for yourself, you get rewarded in terms of business. So mm. it's helped me so much in terms of just my flow, my decision making. Mm-hmm. I think emotional regulation is so important in business. Yeah. Um, you control your thoughts, which control your emotions, and therefore you can make really good decisions. Mm. Um, so me personally, the whole self-discipline and morning routine has been, well, you know, mean, amazing. Discipline in business is massive. Consistency is massive too. Mm. And that's obviously you, you holding yourself to that morning routine translates into your business too because those, those two traits there alone are massive. Yeah, and being able to show up for yourself and also... Like if you're going to make these big business decisions or even small business decisions, you want to be in the best mindset possible. So if you've you know trained your your mind's right, your body's right, you're in a better position to make those big calls opposed to sort of being in a vulnerable state. You said it, bro. It's just showing up for yourself. Yeah. Like I don't do what we did this morning for anyone else but myself. Yeah. I wake up every single day, show up for myself every single day for me. Like I'm not seeking validation from other people like, wow, this guy is so motivated and wakes up at 5 a.m. every day and does his cold therapy, all that stuff. I like to inspire and motivate. Don't get me wrong. I love doing that and that is why I post. But the reason why I'm showing up for myself every day is to give me the confidence so that I can make the best decisions. I can get the best flow for my business. Um, And that's why I've implemented such a a heavy morning routine like you saw it this morning yeah five kilometer walk breath work meditate positive affirmations gratitude mm. going for a swim like i do all these things so that um uh, my businesses can can thrive. <clears throat> and with that so we obviously yeah you just <clears throat> said your whole routine then for for someone if there's someone watching or listening that say you have like a full-time job you're not in a very good headspace you don't really have the flexibility or like I don't know, I guess the... The freedom to yeah, do the Yeah, I guess the, the freedom and sort of like initially to go from zero to that is a lot. What, if you could prioritize something for them to do or something, you know, what do you think is the most important thing you do or how would you take that first step to sort of work towards from where someone is at zero to where you are now and to sort of experience what we experienced mm. this morning? It might be a bit overwhelming for someone that doesn't really have... Yeah, for sure. To yeah. To go like from that. nothing to all of that. Yeah. yeah. I think meditation, yeah. um, like I said before... If you can control your thoughts, you control your thoughts control your emotions. Mm-hmm. Your emotions control your behavior, and your behavior controls your reality. So, a big thing in controlling your thoughts is meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you guys are aware that it's not it's not easy. Meditation is really hard, and especially in this day and age, we have a very creative imagination and very vivid memory. So our human behavior is always living in the future, always living in the past. Mm. So you want to be as present as possible. And the way you do that is through meditation. Meditation helps so much to control your thoughts. We have 80,000 thoughts per day. I'm pretty sure it's 80,000. And majority of that, I think it's around 60,000 and negative, which is fucking crazy. crazy. So meditation for me is a way to not only control my thoughts, but control it in a way that I'm how I'm speaking to myself that voice in your head Mm. it it needs to be a safe space you want that voice in your head to be a nice person you don't want it to have 60,000 negative thoughts like I know for a fact I don't because I put in the work with meditation so to come back to your question what's what's something that someone can implement every day for me it's just 10 minutes of meditation yeah 10 minutes of meditation will will change your life and hopefully uh help you control your thoughts will control your uh, behavior obviously we've gone through like your morning routine what does your sort of day-to-day life look like at the moment yep so morning routine uh that's locked in been doing that for the past three years and that won't change i, I absolutely love that puts me in the best stead to start the day mm. it gives me so much energy so much clarity and then from there it takes me about two hours to do that so about 8 a.m um 8 till 10 a.m i do a no disruption no notifications no phone where i'm just 
getting like into full flow. That's mm. where I get I most of my work done. Massive. Yeah, I um, that. Yeah, my productivity just goes through the roof. I know from eight to 10, I'm getting my best work done there. Yeah. And then uh, I fast till about 11, 12 o'clock midday. Um, yeah, so I'm, I've just been eating super clean. Um, I'm not vegan, but I only eat chicken. That's to help the environment. So I've obviously got a passion for the environment. Mm. Uh, that's obviously we can go down that later. But, uh, <laughs> that's a humble, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I fast till about midday and I just work in blocks. So that's how I yeah. find my most productivity is like boxing off certain hours of the day to get this, yeah, yeah, these yeah. things done. But because of uh, the multiple businesses I have and just how my world works is I, I couldn't tell you, even today, I couldn't tell you from 8 till 4 p.m. what I'm doing. Mm. Um, every day is very different. But as long as I have that no disruption from 8 till 10 and then two other working blocks, mm. um, that's how my life is. I lock in a gym session at 4 p.m. every day. So I think uh, location has energy and time also has memory. So if you do something at the same time in the same location every day, it becomes a habit. Mm. Uh, so I go to the, the same gym, same time every day, 4 p.m., no excuse. So I lock my morning routine in, I lock uh, the gym in. So gym's really important to me, physical health, it's yeah. so important also for your mental health as well. And then uh, after gym, I just sort of, yeah, have dinner. Um, and then I have a little bit of a night routine, which is just, have a have my mushrooms, my reishi, not magic mushrooms. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's uh, just this reishi to help me calm down. Yeah, cool. Because uh, I, I do have a pretty uh, sporadic yeah. uh, brain, so it just helps me calm down. And then I read, uh, s- sort of for thirty minutes. Yeah, I just read a book, mm. sort of self development book. Yeah, sick. I really like the the blocks. Have you ever read the book Essentialism? No, I haven't. So it talks about with my like my own sort of business. I sort of just my whole thing was just I need to outwork everyone I need to do as much mm. as I can I need to do as much as I can and I spread myself too thin and the quality of work that I was doing what I found I was I was just not burnt out but it, my, my work wasn't too great I was like mentally a bit fatigued but I was just going through the motions and I don't, didn't allow myself that time to sit sit back and think and then yeah when I, I read the book Essentialism and started doing that those blocks so I'd do it in like 45 minute blocks for the sort of important tasks oh. and the quality of work and quality of sort of my thinking and how I was operating was so much greater. So I think that's a, a huge one. Yeah, I think it's so important because like people will go, yeah, I'm grinding, I'm doing 12 hour days, but out of that 12 hour days, what are you What's actually that? putting in? Yeah. 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 So like, I, yeah, I think it's super important. Um, I've implemented that in the past year and my productivity has just gone through the roof. So yeah, it's uh, cool to flex on the amount of hours you work, but yeah. it's even cooler about getting the, the productive work done. Yeah, cool it's cool you don't have to do a whole lot of hours and you're in a good spot, you know what I mean? Exactly, and I think yeah. uh, one thing th- this day and age is like, it's the biggest dick measuring contest of if someone goes, oh, what are you up to today? Yeah, super busy. Like, why is busy a mm. good thing? <laughs> the goal is to have time freedom where you yeah. only work maybe four hours a day. Like, Isn't that the whole, the whole point of, of setting yourself up is so you don't have to work? Exactly. Like, so you put in the hard hours and you, you want to work harder than smarter. I'm smarter than harder. Yeah, sorry. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And don't get me wrong, in, in this industry and... Being an entrepreneur and having a business, you have to fucking work hard. There are no, there are no shortcuts. If you want to be successful, you have to grind and work long hours. But when we come back to productivity, it's like I would rather work eight hours of productive, good flow work than 12 hours of like things everywhere. Mm. Um, so yeah, you, you got to work hard. There are no shortcuts in this game. But mm. yeah, the goal is to not say, yeah, things are busy. Like why is busy being good? You should be, yeah, I've got all the freedom in the in the world. I make mm. money when I sleep. I've, I've delegated here and there so I don't have to work and I'm making mm. three times the amount. Yours. Yes. You were saying before eight till four is sort of different every day because you have a few different business yeah. ventures. Can you just run us through, I guess, what sort of your, your focuses are at the moment? What sort of businesses you do have? Yeah. So big shift in my life recently. Um, this was my baby, Third Fix. Uh, I innovated the product and I never thought of, uh, you know, exiting oh, and nice. selling. Yeah. And uh, I suppose what I'm saying is, um, yeah, I, I sold the business, sold 90% of the business mm-hmm. in February this year. And 
it was just massive. yeah it was really cool man it was a, an acquisition company reached out to me they, they loved the brand and they wanted to see the numbers they were happy with the numbers and then uh yeah i'm happy to say i sold it for 900k um Ooh, yeah let's <laughs> let's go. Go. <laughs> yeah uh sold it for 900k uh, got to keep ten percent, which is really important to me as well because I get to oversee a lot of the things. I still get to see their marketing, advertising, um, brand development. They want to do like product development. So you're still involved. In yeah, that. I'm super like really involved. I'm still doing a lot of the wholesale here in Australia. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose that was a, a chapter in my life, um, and it was pretty cool. The acquisition company were very upfront with me. They're like, look. You haven't taken it, this to the US. We're super confident we can 10X this within two years. Oof. So having that 10% is really important because yeah, yeah, yeah. if they're going to exit or they're going to scale this thing up, that 10%, if they're going to 10X, it's the same as what I'm earning now, Yeah, 100%. Uh, which, is, which is amazing. So yeah, third fix, uh, that's happened. And then now I've got a new startup called, when's this coming out? On Friday. On Friday. Yeah, should be fine. It's called Let's Go. Yeah. Uh, let's, yeah go let's, let's go. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so it's a RTD, ready to drink, uh, pre-workout. Uh, it's taken me a year to to finalize the True. formula, the ingredients, the brand around it. it. There's a lot of work that goes into this space of energy drinks, pre-workouts, nootropics, yeah. all that type of stuff. So yeah, me and my cousin going in uh, partnership with him. Super excited for this. It's, it's exciting. something that just aligns a lot with my life. Like I'm very yeah. into the gym now and every second word I'm saying, let's go. So <laughs> it's just, it was just sort of, yeah, perfect. Um, so that's a, a new startup in my life that yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. really pumped about. Is that taking up much of your time at the moment? It's, it's probably 50% of my time. 50% uh, yeah. of my time is going into the can development, the ingredients, um, how I'm going to market this thing and strategize this thing. So I can sit here and confidently say that in three years, I'll sell this business for a hundred mil. Like, Ooh. yeah, I got goose on say oh, like, oh, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very confident in this and, and the team that we have. It's not really tapped into at the moment too. There isn't really another, I guess, big energy drink that I can think of. I think yeah. pre-workout, bro. So I think for me, I think energy drink, uh, like you've got the boys from Prime now, they're, they're, they're quite yeah, big. Yeah. C4. Um, yeah, so C4 is our, is our big That's competitive. C4 and Optimum Nutrition, the amino energy that you're talking about, they're the mm. two pre-workouts that, that we're going to be competing with. Um, they're, they're made in America. Um, there's actually no Australian made pre workout. That's what I was kind of getting at. It was right. like, I feel like it's almost like cruises and GR. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. Sort of same sort of concept. Yeah. So, uh, super pumped for this. Our point of difference is when you go and look in a fridge, it's very busy, bright, colorful. Mm. Uh, the coloring and the, our brand uh, is very minimalistic. It's going to be a matte white can with. Just like super min minimalistic design, yeah. so it does pop. Uh, it's going to be no carbonation. So carbonation is what basically you open a drink and it becomes fizzy. Yeah. So it's like a still pre-workout. It's almost, it's almost like a juice. Like yeah. you can scull this thing. It's like super yeah. easy to scull. We've also got the only pre-workout that has the recommended daily dose of creatine in it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have creatine in their pre-workout, but ours is, I think it's five grams, five or six grams in it. We formulated it. So the reason why other brands haven't done it is because it becomes really chalky, yeah. like, like white sort of powder, like just very chalky and it just doesn't taste great. We've formulated it. So it's creatine HCL. It's actually a more premium uh, creatine. You can't taste it. There's no texture. Mm. Uh, yeah, man, I'm super pumped for that. It's a, a startup. So, how many different flavors have you got? It's got six, oh. six different flavors. Oh, yeah. We're how coming out with four. To work out, like, to, to, how long would it take to get your flavors? Man? A long time. That's probably been the biggest process. Yeah. Is I'm so picking which yeah, ones? Very yeah. picky, and also you have to separate uh, emotion from these businesses, yeah, and ha yeah. you have to think logically. Just because you like a flavor doesn't mean majority yeah, of yeah, people yeah. are gonna like yeah. a flavor. So I've tested it with a, a lot of different pe uh, a lot of different yeah people, and I've actually done a lot of like market research on mm. what flavors from other companies are their best sellers, and like just because. 
uh, a flavor that I don't like from another company, but is their best seller. You mean I've I've got to take away my ego, yeah, strip yeah, the yeah, ego, yeah. and go. Yeah. Okay, just because I don't like it. You're not doing the business for yourself. It's for exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's for everyone else. So it's been it's been a long time uh, in in creating this thing. We're, we're about a month off launch, and that I'm makes... super excited. We're going to be super loud in this space. Like yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah be very loud in terms of launching this thing. Open day workouts at heaps of gyms, nice. uh, jumping out of helicopters, going to Dubai in cars. Sick. Like gonna be like yeah Massive. super loud with this thing. And um, I've now got a lot of money to to put put yeah. towards this mm-hmm. thing. You got that back. I think yeah I think it's very important with a startup is is having some sort of funding um, mm. because look e-commerce is very saturated these days. Yeah. Mm. Every second person I know has a clothing brand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook ads are, are very expensive now in terms of cost per acquisition. So it's it's important to have funding behind you. Mm. Yeah. And I suppose so. To re, I want to get into sort of what's next for that, but I just want to rewind before we get too far away from it. So, with the sort of with third fix and sort of you built that and then exited. Obviously, there was how long between sort of starting it and sort of this point has it been? Three and sort years. of and sort of what was that process like so obviously we've spoken about building building it but sort of like not necessarily day to day but if you could think back in sort of sections what was sort of the major things you Mark went from sort of sort of when you went all in and when you sort of like finished up at uni and sort of went through that process what was those three years like and sort of is there any sort of um anything you could say or any not necessarily tips, but any big milestones where you're like, oh, this is very important or that was very important to build that to where it was yep. to then exit and then, yeah. yeah. I think for me is um, if, if someone has a nine to five and wanting to become their own boss or wanting to start their own business, keep the nine to five. You have to have money mm-hmm. in the back. Like you can't rely on the business it's to now right. pay for your expenses for your living. Yeah, because it's not cheap. <laughs> nah, it's, yeah. it's not. So for me, that something that helped me scale the business was putting all the money back into it. Yeah. Every single cent for the first year, I didn't touch. And that yeah. helped me pay for influencers, pay for content, put money behind advertising, behind yeah. marketing, b- behind web development, because it's it's not cheap. E-commerce, like people think it's, take a photo on Instagram, make sales. There is a lot more yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. So for me, advice for people moving into a startup is, you have to put every single cent back into the business. Yeah. So it's important, you know, I come back to ego a lot because ego uh, can either make or break your business. Mm. So a lot of people think, oh, because I'm starting my own business, I'm going to quit my nine to five because it doesn't look cool. Mm-hmm. It's not attractive to people looking outside in. Keep that nine to five for as long as you can so that just you can just... Stability. Stability, yeah. And just, yeah, like I said, putting money back into the business. But... Uh, another thing is staying on trend with things. Yeah. So TikTok at the moment is the Pop easiest it. way to, to go organic and get views. Yeah. But a lot of people will go, oh, TikTok's just for dancing or TikTok's for just young people. Mm. Like just sticking on trend with things. Adapting trends, and, yeah. a- Adapting to things. Like what's, what's next? What's the next big thing? AI. Okay, so AI needs to be running all my marketing, all my scripting. It has to be somehow creating my content for me. Like you just yeah. need to be adapting with the times because the people who adapt the quickest, they're the ones that, that are rewarded and, and mm. get the fruits from that. Yeah, hundred percent. And then sort of to go back, so full circle. So now we're, we're this is about to launch. What's it, so you said you're gonna go to Dubai and go pretty hard with that. And then sort of what's the next, I guess, three months look like yeah, to get yeah, you? Have you got a plan? Yeah. So, so numbers. Numbers. So yeah. very important to understand where you are now and what this looks like. For me, I've got, I have the next three years planned out in yeah. terms of numbers. So that's probably something that third fix lacked was, okay, knowing from my first three months, I've got to do 30,000 units, which means then, okay, how many units is my next order? Mm-hmm. And therefore, okay, I'm not putting all the money back into stock because I need to leave some for marketing for... Yeah influencer marketing for paying my employees so understanding the numbers is super important and i think my my partner and my cousin rob that's where his strength lies is um numbers and and like just strategizing and having systems in place i think that's really important is first and foremost you need to document everything and when i mean document i don't mean getting a camera out and, and filming yourself i mean writing down everything in terms of 
okay, customer service, this is my tone of voice, marketing, this is how we take content. Um, yeah, just trying to document it's as much things like as possible. Goals. I wouldn't say setting goals, it's just how the business runs, yeah. okay? So document how the business runs so that you can put structures in place so that you can delegate. So when employee, yeah, employees can come in, you have systems and structures, structures in place so that they know exactly how the business runs yeah. because it takes a lot of time and energy to tell employees how to do this and how to run that because yeah, yeah. essentially you want to be employing people, hiring people that are better than you at your yeah. job. So document everything, have these structures in place so that you can uh, delegate. But coming back to your question, the next three months is, is knowing my exact numbers of my targets that I need to hit, yeah. where I put my money, and just being super loud, bro. Yeah. Uh, I want to rough some feathers up in this space. Uh, I, I do want to be the biggest pre-workout in Australia, and the only way to do that is to be super loud. Yeah, 100%. And so when I mean loud, I mean like my marketing, we have to do some pretty crazy things. Yeah. Um, and like the whole brand is like, we want to empower people. Like the name is let's go, like let's yeah. fucking go. You know, everything <laughs> yeah, yeah. we need to be doing is in that empowering and even inspiring and motivating people to go to the gym. So we've got to be pretty loud in terms of our marketing, yeah. You were saying um, before how that let's go is about 50% of your time at the moment. Yep. W- where's the rest of your time? The other 50% is going into uh, my Amazon course and automation. So throughout my journey of e-commerce, I have realized that it takes a lot of time and energy to create an e-commerce. Yeah. Um, so to build a website, to create social media, which you have to create different types of uh, content for TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Mm. You have to reply to your customer service, which is Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger, email. You have to pack your orders. You have to do all these things. And uh, there was an Amazon agent that reached out to me that put third fix on Amazon. And I just I couldn't believe the numbers. I was astonished by the numbers we did in November yeah, last year. We actually did three times the amount than my usual website. Yeah. Wow. So I, I looked into Amazon. I'm like, oh, this is, this well, what's, what's going on here? here? What's going on here? Going so there's a few here. things. There's a few things. Um, so the first thing is is what I said is is the time freedom. So to create yep. an e-commerce, there's so much time that goes into it. As with Amazon, so with Amazon, eight out of ten people in America search for the product they're searching for on Amazon before Google. Nine out of 10 people have an Amazon account. Oh, nine out of 10 online shoppers have an Amazon account. Mm-hmm. So it's already this big marketplace that mm-hmm. people go on to, right? So another thing was like, okay, how do I find a product that's doing really well? So I knew my bottle was going to do well because it does well here in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm like, how, how can I find a product that does really well? There's a software that helps you find products that are already in high demand, yeah. but they're super low competitive. Right. So with Amazon, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You just want to find a product that's already doing well, but it's super low competition. Mm. So yeah, man, that's I sort of got involved in this Amazon space because uh, I think it's extremely hard to create an e-commerce brand. And this is for people who haven't done this before. Like I know what it takes to be successful in e-commerce. and. Yeah. I have the self-discipline to create. Yeah, Mm. I I, I have the discipline and I have the experience to make Let's Go a $100 million business. But for people jumping into wanting a a side hustle of things, Amazon Mm. is definitely the go. Like like I said, with that whole time freedom, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Amazon takes 30% of your revenue to look after your customer service. So replying to all emails, Mm -hmm. they actually have a 24 seven like support team there. They pack all your orders for you next day delivery. Like, yeah, so I've created a course. This is where 50, the other 50% of my time is going is uh, building a course and building uh, a do for you. So an automation, so you give me money and I'll create an Amazon store for you. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, the service, so you can either have a product, which is let's go, that's my new venture, or a service. Um, and the thing about service is it's 100% profit. There's mm. no employees, there's no stock, there's no marketing. It's like, overheads are not yeah, the, the overheads are very, mm. very like little. So yeah, I've got Amazon at the moment. That business is called New Rich Group. We've, we've done really well so far. It's just sort of been pushed organically by me, but I'm yeah. starting paid ads soon. Um, and I think... 
the important thing when having a course or a service is the success of your students. Mm -hmm. So something that I've found out, Mm. yeah, that's something that I've found out is there's there's a bad taste of e-com courses out there and e-com coaches. Like so generic these days. So generic and it's they make more money from the course than than having an e-com store. You know what I mean? So I've done this. I have a successful Amazon store. I I know what it takes. So Mm. I make more money from that than the course. As with these guys they're making more money from from selling a yeah, course, yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. So, I, I have a I've got three virtual assistants within um, the community, like the group chat that I give you when you have a course, and I call them accountability managers. So, when you have a, an accountability partner or a friend that keeps you accountability, your percent of your goals go up by ninety percent. Same you, thing with like gym or whatever sort yep. of physical activities. Yeah. So if you have that accountability, someone mm. to keep you accountable, your goals go up by 90%. So within that course, you're allocated an accountability partner um, to increase that likelihood of you succeeding. Because that's the mm. important thing about this is, yeah, I could sell thousands and thousands of courses, but for me, it's really important the success of these students. Mm. So then off the back of that, I can scale it and sell more courses. Mm. Um, so for me, yeah, it's making sure that the success rate is high by making sure the course is very in depth, doesn't yeah. leave any stone on turn and giving them accountability partners. Do you have like an age bracket, I guess you're trying to target for this? It's more, um, their situation. So you could be a 60 year old, you could be a 20 year old, whatever. It's, I want to give you financial freedom, time freedom and location freedom. They're the three freedoms you want in life because you know, you could be a doctor working 16 hour days. Yeah, you get financial freedom, but you get two holidays a year and you're yeah, working yeah, yeah. these long ass hours. So I would rather be working four hours a day and be on 100K mm. instead of working every single day, 10 to 12 hours a day, only getting yeah, yeah, one yeah. holiday and on 500K a year. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Quality so, of life. Not, exactly. So I'm pushing that quality of life with those three freedoms because Amazon One gives you time freedom, mm-hmm. gives you location freedom. As long as you've got a laptop and a Wi-Fi, you can work from anywhere in the world because you don't need the stock. The stock goes from straight from China, from the manufacturer we find, yeah. straight to the Amazon store. And then financial freedom. Obviously, it's really important to have financial freedom. Mm. I don't think money buys you happiness, but money buys you the freedom to do the things that you love. Mm. Okay, so like, yeah, yeah. yeah, the materialistic things are are fun and things like that, but money buys you the freedom to work on your passion. Mm. So it's something that I I push as well is, let's start an Amazon store for you, let's get some money, and then if you have a passion, let's start an an e-commerce brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing at the moment, is 50% of my time is going towards New Rich Group, and then 50% is going towards Let's Go. How sick. And you, so you touched on there's a few softwares and things like that you're using. Just as sort of a, a question moving forward, what do you think happens with the current job market and all this AI stuff that's coming out? Like, and for yourself as well, Mark, this question for you. Like, what do you think happens over the next year, two years, three years? Because I think personally, a lot of people are sort of like, I think they're skipping a lot of the education sort of things that sort of I went through because so there was no AI or anything like that. I sort of had to had to go to school, focus to sort of, you know, learn. Then I went to uni. And then I sort of had to put in these hard yards to learn mm-hmm. the things that I do now and sort of like teach myself and everything like that. So what do you think happens when like, like, you know, personally, I think a lot of people are unskilled, uneducated, and then now they have this tool of AI, so which is they can use, but it's also going to replace a lot of their jobs. What do you think happens to the economy and everything like that moving forward. Definitely a lot of jobs lost. That's I think it's gonna be crazy. I think, uh, so at the moment, there's this middle class, very yeah. large middle class. So you got rich people, poor people, and you have this middle class. The mm. majority of us lie. I mean, the goal is to get here, but this middle class, I think eventually, like in the long term, it's it definitely, evaporates. It's definitely mm. If, if I, to be honest, but I don't know how the fuck people are living. Like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like the expenses oh. and everything, inflation, oh. and they're dying down inflation. They're saying, you know, inflation's only, I don't know, nine, ten percent. It's fucking bullshit. And yeah. Inflation is for me, is what did you buy petrol for this time last year, mm. or food, what? Groceries, everything, I food and groceries. Years, you know, I was paying like maybe a hundred bucks a week. Now I'm paying like three hundred, three fifty a week. It's ridiculous. It's so I think it's rent petrol. Up. Uh, groceries and rent what were you paying this yeah. time last year 
That is the percent of inflation. Bro, it's over 25%. It's, it's crazy. And I don't know how people are living. I don't know. Is, that, is it just the Gold Coast that's this bad? Or is it obviously no. not groceries, but rent was? I think it's all of Australia. Rent, Mostly, was, yeah. rent has definitely gone up by a fuckload. And like, like I was saying, like, I, I don't know where this ends up because you can look at it at two ways. One way with the AI stuff is it means that you have to be super creative. Mm. Okay, so this, this nuts out all the people that... Um, doing the things that you said you have to just be super creative because AI yeah. replaces all of that now the generic stuff yeah yeah lawyers script writers yeah. like it's it's Crazy. pretty it's pretty scary so you got to think of ways to um, be creative but the thing with AI the the most important thing is how are you prompting this AI mm. so people go how good to chat GBT and then I go, yeah it's awesome what are you asking yeah what do you use it for yeah and it, they, they're using it for the most dumbest shit yeah, like yeah, just yeah. the most random stuff <laughs> and I'm like use it to scale your business yeah. use it to make you a better person like become the best version of yourself by finding out health tricks and self development stuff and like mm. yeah people are just using it for the wrong reasons mm. and if they if they find ways in how to use this and, and prompt it in, in the best ways you can really make the most of it. Mm. Exciting times, scary times, but exciting. <laughs> I, I, uh, scary times. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, we can we can go down the the route of of the world that we live in, and oh. uh, I actually put on my story yesterday on like I, I don't think I want to have kids because of how scary it is, and not in terms of the financial side, but this left wing oh, ideology my God, of it's crazy. a uh, hundred genders and. Oh, it doesn't make it. Oh, like for me yesterday, I was, I was filling out a password. I was uh, applying for a password because my password went through the wash. And there was six different genders no, no, that I could apply for. There was male and female. There was other. There was non-binary. And then there was men's trans and women's trans. Well, there were six options. And I'm going, this, like, it's pretty scary because people with... Uh, a platform such as myself are scared to like talk on these things are scared mm. to like, for me personally i'm not against trans like that's you do, you do your thing yep. but yep. what i'm against is like them trying to put it on kids yep. and like yeah that's, that's crazy stuff. that's one right. thing that like i'm not comfortable yeah. with there's two like, things there's two things for me that I, i'm strongly like have this ideology on this is one is our education system system do not put this on our kids Especially yeah. at a young age, from age zero to seven, you're in this theta yeah. state. Your brain, I'm so confused. You're, you're taking on all these things subconsciously. This is where you develop a lot of your patterns as an as an adult at a very young age. Mm. And bro, there's YouTube videos of like like you know what people are watching of like young educational videos on there of all these genders and I'm, all these type I'm of gonna, things. I've got a one year old son. Yeah. Um, so much of the shit online these days on YouTube that it's made for kids. They're like putting like, I don't know, dragons that are like changed from like girls to boys or whatever. There's like so much shit like that. They're just pushing it really hard on on young people. Yeah. It's like, why? So it's the education. Do not put it on our, on our youth. That's Mm. the first thing. The second thing is keep males out of female sports. Like, yeah, hundred percent. That's nice. unfair. Like, bro. Okay, bring a female into a men's sport. Like, I might sound misogynist here, but nine out of ten times a guy beats a female in any type of sport, any mm. athletic or contact sport. And that, so if a female wants to come in, that's fine. But the reason why I'm so strong on keeping males out of females is because you prevent a young girl from winning a gold mm. medal. You prevent them from winning. You prevent them from having that yeah. feeling of coming first. Because, like I said. Males, we are born genetically superior for sport. Yeah, Our bone physically. density is larger. Our muscle mass is bigger. So if you put a male in a female sport, yeah. majority of the time, it's just unfair. And it's crazy like how passionate these people... So the, the people that speak the loudest are the ones that aren't in elites. Like if you ask an elite female who's playing, like who's swimming or whatever, and you look at that person, instead of getting first, they get second, second gets third, third gets fourth, gets no medal just because... Like they brought 100%. a male yeah, in. It's so unfair. And the people that are speaking aren't even the ones... If you go ask the people that are actually doing the sport in that environment, they'd agree with us. But there's such a loud voice of these people yeah. that just like want something to talk about and want yeah. to argue about that like that's just become the thing. Yeah. Did you it's see crazy. That? There was a court case that was one in Australia 
and it was a female, a male that transitioned to a female, yep. a weightlifter, and she won, or I wanted to compete or whatever it was, mm. and it ended up, she, oh, she sued like this company, massive money. Really? And she competed good. and ended up winning. No, yeah. Not good. She's a, she was a, a male. Oh, oh, trans oh I misinterpreted. Yeah. She was oh. a male that trans that... into female, ended up winning this powerlifting thing. Oh, I thought you were talking about the, uh, and okay, exactly on. Saying, It's like, yeah, males <laughs> competing against females and she ended up winning, and she won the, the court case in Australia. It's, it's, no. And it's ridiculous, Brian. There's a, there's a big fear at the moment of speaking out on this because majority of people think the way we do. But because we're so, how do I put this, secure in our life and, and I don't know. Like, you can't have conversations. Like, no, you can't. So what I'm, I'm happy have... to listen to somebody else's perspective on yeah. this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like, but I've got a perspective too. Like, and people just uncomfortable talking about nah, it. and you can't have a conversation without it being yeah. an argument yeah. I would love for someone to sit down and tell me why it's a good thing for males to be in female sport why you yeah. think that's a, that's a good thing like I had a conversation with a male who turned into a female yeah so a male who turned into a female and I kept saying like bro and mate and because she looked it gets so confusing she looked like a guy and so mm. she said to me hey can do you mind if you um call me she her i said yep yeah, that's fine that's that's fine like i said keep it out of our education keep it out mm. of the sport but if you want to identify as a female I, I think it's okay this is after i spoke to this person mm. is when she was brought up she was a guy but liked playing with dolls like the color pink never fit in with any male groups, mm. male tribes, like just felt very lost, out of touch with being a male. And so she was trying to help me think and put into perspective. And whenever you have this conversation, you have to be super neutral with mm. it. You can't just emotionally take um, one yeah, side. So I'm listening away, yeah. to this, this girl and I'm trying to get this perspective of like how uncomfortable and alone she would have felt throughout her whole childhood mm. and growing up never feeling like a male like she was like mitch like like i'm a girl I, like yeah i have i have a dick but like i'm a i'm a female like and and so it made me really like think like trans like when you want to identify as something else like i think it's okay i'm, I'm pretty open towards it but do not fucking identify as a cat do not identify Bro. as anything else besides a male or female there are two genders there are two chromosomes mm. in terms of identifying sure identify as a male or a female even though biologically you may be different your gender is different to what you identify but stick to those two things and keep this left-wing ideology out of female sport and out of education especially with like kids growing up you can't kids are confused in general and you've got if you've got six different genders and that sort of stuff. It's just not, it's not healthy. Yeah. No. I got a, so, a story to wrap this up. I got a, a friend of mine that's a teacher at a school on the Gold Coast. So they have, I don't know whether this thing uses it or not, whatever they want to be called, but they identify as a cat and they have a litter box in the classroom. Fuck off. I swear <laughs> to God, I'm not kidding. Right. On the Gold Coast. They, they need to be stripped of of That's crazy. being a teacher like this is ridiculous this is wow. things where we speak up on it's like oh it's nuts you you are no, mentally you're, ill you're sending your kid and you're, you're dropping your kid off to class and, and there's a cat cat litter in the corner because what the, the teacher no the student oh, one so of the one students. of the students yeah yeah and they've Whoa. just gone okay and sort of like and it's, it's like crazy. is the student taking point? the piss because they're know. allowed to now yeah. like you like i'm pretty sure students can go no you have to identify me as a cat like the yeah. teacher can't go Oh, sorry, you're not a cat. Like you're yeah. you're a boy. They can't do that anymore, yeah, which is ridiculous. Crazy. So I feel like, you know, if the kids are just taking the piss now because yeah. they know how kids funny yeah, this is. Get attention. Everyone, all kids have got imaginations, you know. Yeah. What I mean? But like, be, be, they don't even know they're um, either a man or a female. Exactly. They can't generally think they're a cat. That's yeah, crazy. crazy. So yeah, coming back to where I, where we started with all this was. <laughs> I am pretty fearful of having kids, man. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you've you've got you've got a kid yourself, you've got a newborn on the way. I, I get scared of gr mm. like, is it fair bringing a child up into this world where you know there's so many things now where it's it's hard to there's speak up on because there's definitely of some stuff that's out of your control. Like, um, that's one thing that I guess in the next 
two years, I guess, we would see how it unfolds. Like, choosing a school is going to be massive too. Yeah. Like, well, for me, bro, I think I think I'm going to be homeschooling my kid. Mm-hmm. I and think that's, that's another option. In our generation, it was you're pretty weird if you got homeschooled. Yeah. But I think it's going to be an actual it's going luxury. To be advantage, that's yeah. Going to be very, like, very you know what I mean? So it's not a bad way. My brother, younger brother, does homeschool. He does it in two days. Achieves the same thing over five years as. He's really switched on, yeah. so you can. But still, like it's. Yeah. Definitely something to think about in this next but, sort of uh, nice. decade coming up. As, um, obviously, you don't have kids at the moment. What is your purpose? Because go yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. go. <laughs> let's How go. good. Let's finish it on that. Awesome. Let's finish on that. Right. Thanks for the time, brother. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, see you guys next next episode. Thank you.